Hello and welcome to a new thing we're doing here on PNN, uh, PNN podcast. I got my my one co-host who's going to be with me, hopefully more often, Dakota. And then we have a special guest, Pete. <laughs> You're supposed Pete, to say hi. Move the mic closer to you. Hi. Okay. <laughs> so, what we're doing, we're just. We're always going to listen to me eat. No, we're not. That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty sure I did. It's but this one is a uh, multiplayer tactical first-person shooter that supposed to be like real first-person real life sort of. Like it would be real people in it. And like shots are about like most action and feeling that sort of. But it's supposed to be really like you know metal. You shoot metal. It's supposed to be really loud and deafening. Oh, so it's going to kind of be like realistic almost. Yeah, it's yeah. more realistic than that. All right, all right. Okay. I'm done with that. Oh, I played the first one. The first one's really good. There's customization for the guns are crazy, but it all depends on how many points you have. And like, if you're on the like normal, not like the Iranis who are like the insurgents and whatever, they don't have that many points, so you can't customize their gun as much. And armor level, like everything about your character, gun, armor, uh ammo capacity cost on those points and you have to kind of think about how you're going to divide that up are you just going to have like armor and a little bit of ammo with a very customized good gun or you're going to be more a support type with like whatever class you are like if you're ro- rocket infantry or whatever you have an rpg but you don't have to use that rpg you can take off the rpg and customize your weapon which yeah. i am I'm not a very good team player. I'm more about <laughs> getting the kills. It doesn't. Well, as long as you play the objective, you'll be fine. What are your thoughts on it, Dakota? My thoughts. Well, I still don't know much about the game, so. Oh. <laughs> but what, what we just talked about, how do you think it'll be played, and I how mean, do you think it, you'll it like it? Like from what I'm hearing from you guys, it sounds like it's going to be like more realistic than what most games usually do. And with me, sound is a big, big thing with video games. Like, the sounds are crappy. It's just going to be kind of like... There's one thing I forgot to also add. Apparently, the select fire, you can see it move and change position. Your uh, drop mag, you're supposed to be able to see your your person press the button. So it's going to be, like, down to the T, realistic as possible. Sounds really good. And I do want to move on to a game that I told Pete and he got really hyped about, which is Daisy on console. How yes. do you guys think that's going to work? Yes. I still need to play any Daisy game. Oh my god, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Same I mean, here. I haven't played I any of them. What's wrong did, with did either they have of like you? A phone version of it? Like, I think they talked about having a phone version. I don't think there ever was. But I don't think they. Because I know I played Dropped something it. that was supposed to basically be DayZ, and it was on my phone, I, but I don't like a lot of phone games in the first place. Was like, it like a overhead? You Yeah. I know you're talking about it. Yeah, that, that is a game, but that's not... Oh, like so there's one that's like called Last Standing or something like that. I it's, think... But, yeah. um, there's a lot of phone games that I, I don't like, like uh, RuneScape. I love RuneScape, but then they, and they made the mobile version. I was like, oh my god, yes, it's free. I played it was like, Cause I it's think the same. It's old school Rune, RuneScape. And I loved old school RuneScape. A lot of people don't like it though. I love it. But back to Daisy, 
I've seen videos on it, and I like that you can just jump in a server and role play anything out. Yeah. And I just think it's going to be an amazing game. What is the premise of DayZ? Like survive. It's survive. a survival game. Spawn in. Get loot. You could be an awful person, just kill everyone you see, or you could team Help up. You, they just added in. This game has been out for a, a while, and they have not done one thing to it. It's actually so fully out as a game. You it's can like either be a complete troll and make people mad and have a lot of fun, yeah, or you can team up and find some way to ruin other people's lives. Yes, and I it's released by Bohemian Interaction, published by Bohemian Interaction, obviously. It's the, s- fun. the standalone it's version, whatever that means. I don't know. Standalone. Uh, I read sure up on it a little bit. It's like I'm pretty sure that's a mod for either Arma Two or Arma Three. Arma Three DayZ mods and like Arma Two DayZ mods are they're fun, but ri- like original like by itself, it's a lot more realistic because some of the controls like are normally reload. No, that cocks your weapon. Yeah, and you can't just click and shoot you have to hold down the right mouse it aims then you can either hip fire or hit the scroll mouse whatever it's called scroll. that actually aim. scroll your third mouse button yeah and the way the game works it, if you get shot like and you live your clothes is going to be damaged and whatever is in your clothes like in your like if pockets or pockets whatever. it will get, your stuff will get damaged and you won't be able to use it that sounds like that. That's gonna be it's, hard. Yeah, it it is super hard, but you can get in like a low player server and ha- get geared up, get decent stuff. I'm playing on a server right now on PC. I'd rather be playing on a console, but you know, <laughs> it is out for console now. Yeah, that's why we're like talking about it. Yeah, it's Twenty console, bucks. I'll definitely give it a shot. Yeah, it's real fun. Um, yeah. Get geared up. You can two genders, <laughs> obviously. Boy, girl, <laughs> which, whatever, wouldn't you be? But that's like the one thing about online games that I've never understood is when a dude goes as a chick and a chick goes as a dude. I never understood that. The only reason I ever do it is to see if the game changes its playing that's style. Understandable. I, for like, I would do that for, like, uh, solo player games. Like, it was, like, um, I'm trying to think, a uh, game Fable. If you go, if you go as a chick, like, there are things that are different. Like, certain quest lines are different. Fable, Skyrim. Skyrim's not too much. Yeah, Skyrim's not too much. It just says even, uh, him, her. Fallout 4 was a little different as well. Well, Fallout 4 is a lot different because... Spoiler, I don't know if I should say it. It's not boy- spoiler, but the whole premise of the game is trying to find your son. Yeah. yeah. So you can either be the father or the mother. And it just adds, it feels like it adds a whole different dynamic to yeah, it like being a mother. Games, it definitely does. But when it comes to online, it's like World of Warcraft, <laughs> for instance. There'll be several different dudes that have a female character. And for some odd reason. I don't know why they would ever think to do this, but they literally dress the chick up as something that's, like... <laughs> inappropriate. Yeah, and just... Well, there's why? your reason right there. <laughs> the guys want to dress up inappropriately. But it's not just a game. Like, it's an online My game. My thing is, like... If you're not going to play it right, don't play it at all. Well, you know... Well, I've seen this one guy. I can't remember his name, but he did a series on Skyrim. But he played as a girl because that was the character he wanted. But he also did, like, a story with it, so her mother came in, and her father and all this sister, brother, and all this came into the story, and he edited it perfectly to where it looked like they were actually there with that character, and it was beautiful. I can see that being a reason, uh, playing a character to get it up and like get the build. armor. Like, if you're on an online game, and you're actually going to play the game, you're going to make a build and everything. Yeah, I'd go That's mail. understandable, if you're making a build. But if you're just doing it just, just because, like... Why? If you're playing a game and you don't have a natural reason for being a chick, be a per- be a character that resem- resembles you. Because they want to be. I don't know. The only reason I would be a female in like a game is either I'm lazy and I don't want to change it, or I press the wrong button and it switches. Because that happened to me in um, 
uh, something I feel like I should clarify right now because I'm already seeing I'm already seeing like someone someone of unknown origins watching this and calling me out. If you are trans, oh then, my God. then fine. Be be what you want to be in the game. If you are trans, that is perfectly normal. Yeah, we're just talking about like I'm like me that myself. I'm like the fact that I am a dude, I see myself as a dude. I do not see myself as a chick whatsoever. Therefore, I'm not going to be chick in a game where I'm trying to resemble myself. We can turn your mic up if you want. We have people at the side. Yeah, we do have two yeah. people at the side. <laughs> I see people not just like not on this. Uh, he plays a female character in all games because it's just proven fact him. They have smaller hitboxes, so he plays a female in every game. Yeah, that's uh, true. Smaller hitboxes. But that's only working for like PvP though, because if it's like an AI, they're just gonna auto. Yeah, they're auto hitting your hitbox anyways. Yeah. But well, you can still move around. They can still miss, but it's mostly. But yeah. This is really good. <laughs> Sorry for Dakota's eating if it's getting on anybody's nerves. I got hungry. We did have food here in the. We did have food here in the room we're in, in the studio. But I did. But I turned <laughs> it back we down. Really hear not even talking directly into it. <laughs> but so. I, I heard her a little bit, so yeah, she will be picked up. Bit, but. but it is proven fact that female characters do have smaller hitboxes. That's understandable in. PvP games, but PvE games, I don't really see it. I see it as like, if you're doing like a series like I explained earlier, where you're going to have multiple characters in it at once, and you want to do their armor le legitimately, I guess you could say. <laughs> Dakota's just wrecking this whole studio. Yep. I don't know why, but he is. Because this is America, and you can do what you want. Okay, the next game <laughs> I wanted to talk about, because Pete I'm guessing Pete doesn't know what this is. Is Secret Neighbor. I know what it is. I just I've never... never... I've actually never heard of Secret Neighbor. Okay. Do I you know who... It's supposed to be like the game Na Hello Neighbor, or is it different? Yeah, let me explain. The game Hello Neighbor, how you have to go into the house and find the neighbor and see what the neighbor's hiding. Well, in Secret Neighbor, the neighbor is a child like you. And you basically... It's basically uh, Trouble in Terrace Town, if you know what that is. I do know. Basically that, you're trying to find who the... Yeah, you're just the neighbor. Yeah. Okay, I thought I was, think I was thinking of a totally different game, so yeah. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I've heard that it's supposed to be really good. I've seen good reviews and bad reviews on it. Actually, that is something we should actually start doing playing Gmod games. Yes. That's what we should do. We should. They, they, they can't see you. And then, one of the other games I want to talk about is Trials Rising, because Pete doesn't know what the Trials games are. Dakota, do you know what Trials are? Trial games are? No. They're basically <laughs> ragdolled physics uh, motocross games. Oh, They're okay. Side to side scrollers, 3D side, 3D side scrollers, and it's just supposed to be a hilarious and goofy game. With are you talking about like a game that's similar to like um, what was that one game? Uh, you're you're like a dude that's in like trying to get drug up hills and salt and whatnot. Yes. I don't know what the game's actually called, <laughs> but there's one on iOS and Android like, games that Hill Driver. Yeah, you're like looking from the side. Like, there's other games. Like, I didn't know there was. A there are a bunch of games like that. I know there's one that is with like motocross and whatnot. But you're looking from the side, and you're basically trying to go and do flips on. But if you like, if like you hit the landing wrong, like your guy just goes. Yeah, it's basically like that. It's, but this is supposed to be the third installment of Trials. It's no real info on it like there's no story there's no it's just multiplayer that you go and have fun <laughs> <laughs> these headsets really do start itching after a while uh, hoodie, hoodie. Yeah, I'm hoodie. 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 hoodie that's a good idea hoodie but i actually want to hear the audio to make sure it's right 
Oh, that's so much better. Because the hoodie does, in fact, does dampen your audio. Yeah, but it's fine. So, but trial was rising. There's a bunch of different modes in it, and then I guess there's one that has a bike that you and your friend has to. Only one person can go up, one person can go down. One has gas, one has brake. And it seems like really fun, and I think we should play it here and have our teacher, Mr. Croxel, try it. We were just so mad at each other. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I think we should try that and have even Croxel more, try it because I. Even more of a reason to do it. The, like, if me and you start playing it, we will get so mad at each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I walked in and I seen Croxel playing. Blockhead, block hunters, blockhead hunters. Yeah, I saw that too. He's playing a game with a with the with some of the crew member, classmates, whatever you want yeah. to call us. I guess we're, technically we're a crew, but yeah. it's whatever. We yeah, have trial runs, Crewmates. and now I want to talk about this game. We've all know it. We all love it. We all hate it. It's moving to a new system that's coming out. It's Angry Birds FPS, which is first person slingshot. I don't like Angry Birds. That's why I said some of us love it, some of us hate it. And it's not like, like it's not like it's like horror. It's just, I don't find it fun. It's coming to the Magic Leap, which is another VR system. VR games are becoming huge now. Like I am loving the gaming community right now. As someone just drops on by. What did she do? What did you do? You'll see it later in the upload. I will hurt you. <laughs> but it's coming. It's coming this fall. Some of the, most of these games we talked about are released. Some of them have release dates. Like uh, Insurgency Sandstorm is released. Supposed to be March 2019. Mm. Is this release date? But Angry Birds already out. The Magic Leap. I don't know if it's out yet or not. Sorry. I don't know if it's out yet or not, but it seems like it's going to be kind of fun just to waste time on. It's like you have like an hour to spare and wait for a ride or something. Just jump on and shoot some angry birds at some pigs in first person. Yeah, but I, I it's kind of the, the first person thing. That seems pretty cool, but it's like kind of ru- ruining the aspect of like Angry Birds it's just like a mobile game it's 2D 2D side scroller yeah. yeah it's it it seems pretty cool but after a while I think it would just get kind of repetitive cause just doing that the whole time yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying it's like it's gonna be one of those ones that's just a time waster like yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have an I have an hour to spare wait my ride's not here yet to go hang out or whatever uh, that's mainly what most mobile like Mobile games are supposed to be are just time wasting. Yeah. Well, I wasted too much time on mobile games. I'm <laughs> that's that's what a lot. I'm pretty sure that's something like looking at PUBG Mobile. <laughs> like, uh-huh. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of like mobile games out there, like Angry Birds, where people that may were just like, we just need a game to waste people, just for people to waste time with. Just just have just those past time by past time. But then they sink so much money into it. Like when Angry Birds first came out, I have no doubt the developers of it were just kind of like. Well, it just made a fun game for people to pa- pass by. Well, some well some in game purchases, you know. And, as soon as and then their stock money, market it went like, up. It's just like <laughs> they got like their whole movie for Angry Birds. They have an Angry Birds movie now. That's right. Oh but God. you gotta admit, Revo Entertainment Resolution Games. That's the company that made Angry Birds. They're trying something new they with are. their yeah, game. Give them props for it. I'm like gonna they, see they if it do works. Know how to they they know how to drag people into a game. Oh they yeah. <laughs> For some reason my phone's not wanting to scroll through. Now, this is a game I've loved forever. And I'm pretty sure you both know what I'm talking about now. It's Saints Row the Third. Yeah. But the only reason why I'm bringing this up is one, it's a really good game. Oh yes. Two, it's starting to come out on Nintendo Switch now. Which I <laughs> I don't have Nintendo Switch. So. It just how my sister has one now. So that just it's just weird because Nintendo for like years it's just been loads, no, a few games like oh you can play with the family. Now the Switch came out and it's just like you can play whatever now. Let's bring some Call of Duty into this. Skyrim. You know? 
Skyrim. It's Elder like, Scrolls Six, Skyrim. What what happened? What like? All, what happened just, to Mario Kart? <laughs> Mario Kart's still there. It's still a popular oh, game. <laughs> but I think I think the only reason why they're dropping the Switch, dropping like call big name brands like Call of Duty, Saints Row, Fortnite. There's Fortnite. Fortnite. On the Switch. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Yeah, we're not talking. We're not going to talk about Fortnite today. No, (laughs) today. Not today. We'll talk about it later when we bring up dying games. Uh, Okay, dying games. Okay, okay. (laughs) But they're releasing these big name brand games on the Nintendo Switch. I think to try to out do what PlayStation did with the PSP and the PSP Vita. I had one of those. What a PSP? Yeah, I had one too. I loved it in the first few months. It was pretty cool. Then I, I lost it. Had one and I like played it from time to time. I was never fortunate enough to actually have my own. <laughs> I wanted to talk about that because it. Saints Row the Third is an amazing game. Oh Great story. It, the Saints Row games in general, I love. Oh, they're amazing, fun Mainly stories. Why? It's just when they pr- when they brought the first one in. It was, like it was it was similar to like the GTA games. A little different, but similar. Because your character didn't talk in one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, one, he talked a few times. It was rare. He, had, he only had a few lines. And then two dropped, he had a few more lines. Oh, two, he, like, he talked like crazy. Like He was more talkative, like way more talkative. And then three, they decided to drop puns and jokes into the every every sentence like, Pierce they, said. Like, as soon as they got towards the end, like once they started getting into two, they started gaining more with the whole making fun of these actually kind of games. Like, they, they started to have more fun with it. Yeah. Like, they started doing where you're doing more stuff that's absolutely impossible. Because, like, first one, like, the like the realism was a, was more, it was there. Like, there was more realism. Yeah. 2 came one, it got a little further, but not too far. 3 came in, <laughs> and they just go absolutely out of, like, it you, just technically like, it went downhill, started. but it went uphill so fast and so. F- like it, the realism really I love started it. going on three, but it was still somewhat there. Like, you still had things that was there that was real, but there's also things that wasn't real. Like they like they brought zombies into three. <laughs> and like it was an actual like main cause. Like you actually had to fight zombies. Four, I liked four. It was good. What I love. I think they could have done. Explaining the storyline better. But four is the reason why I love the Saints Row games, and the major is why is because they go off like this is a game. It's not supposed to actually be real. Yeah, it's, we're going for the impossible. Now the president part, they probably went a little off story because they just because it went from three your back your game's back on top. You're like the you're now pop stars that are also gay. You have movies and drinks named after you. And then they just go straight to president and four and just okay. See, that's what I'm saying. I think they should have explained. Out good. Like I, I, lo- I love the be- I love the tutorial in the beginning. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Yeah. But for the most part, like the only thing that's the only issue I have with actual Saints Row Four. Is the fact that it just went from the end of three, then, hey, president. Now, I'm going to bring up the next game in its line. Saints Row 5, Got Out of Hell. Never played it. I think I played it a little bit, but it was a while ago, and I don't remember I squat about it. Because I haven't played it yet. I wanted to play it. I know nothing about it. I've played it. I've beat it. It is more... It's along the same style as Saints Row 4. But instead of playing as the boss, you're playing as either Gat or Kenzie. Now, when I first heard about Gat Out of Hell, I thought it was like a DLC kind of thing. Is it an actual DLC or is it actually their fifth game? It was supposed to be originally going to be the idea of it was going to be uh, a DLC. But then since they made it just Gat surviving it, the attack of the alien al- anyway... They just made it their own, its own game. So it's like same time period as four, but yeah, because it's, it's its own standalone game. At the end of four, 
what uh, at the end of four, you, the boss, Kenzie, everybody else is playing cards with each other, and the devil, Satan himself, comes, opens a hole, grabs Gat, pulls him in, and then Kenzie jumps in after him. Uh, okay. So it was gonna be originally be a DLC, but then like we don't know how to interpret this into four, so he just made it their own game. So far, the only way I've noticed how to get it is either buying it on the Microsoft Store or uh, I don't think Saints Row is out for PlayStation. I'm not sure. I think it is. Either Microsoft Store or the PlayStation Store. I don't know. I just really want to try it. Or, Saints Row on PlayStation yet. Yeah. Or buying it as a bundle with Saints Row 4. I didn't like Got Out of Hell that much because it was pretty small of a game. No real, the only storyline to it is that this de- uh, devil is trying to make you marry his daughter. Because okay. she wanted the leader of Saints Row, or like some leader. And I guess he just grabbed the gat instead. Because he liked gat better or something, I don't know. I mean, that's understandable, gat is better. Oh, I liked, my favorite right. character and out of all the Saints Row games, for like, just the serious combat, it will be Gat. But for the making the puns at the right time, always Pierce and the boss together. <laughs> they are the best. Uh, I thought that one of like, the best like relationships in, throughout the entire series is the Gat and you, the character. Because in the first one, you come in as like you're just starting off. like You just joined your rookie in the game, and Gat's there. He first sees he was like, "Who is this?" <laughs> yeah, words we cannot say because this is a school appropriate stream. Yeah. But then, as you go on through that game, you end up doing missions with him against the um... Ronin. I think it is. No, it's not the Ronin. It's the first game. It's oh, I don't uh, know. I haven't played the first one in forever. Same. I know it's the. Uh, I know it's the. I know like. I know the. I know the leader is Benjamin King. But I forget the actual name of the game itself. The Kings or something like that. I don't know. Let's move on. Because yeah. we've been talking about Saints Row yeah. <laughs> for a while now. Yeah. It's a good game. Uh, Let's move on to topics because there's one I w- the last one I want to talk about for a little bit. Well, we'll we'll mention this game and then we'll talk about favorite games and most hated games. Because I know you have some games that you want to talk about. Yeah. Pete, we, I... Went down to a gaming club and just kidnapped Pete, so he's... Someone call 911. Don't do it. Don't oh, do it. We need him here. It's okay. Original, there's three guesses on this show. There's going to be three. We kidnapped him, and then... Uh, there's the other two. two. Lay off to the side. They can't see on camera. They're just kind of like... We're just like, uh, well, this looks interesting. Well, the three original guesses are going to be me, Tom and Shaughnessy, Dakota Corrin... And our friend, Alex Pelly, but uh, sadly, here. Alex Pelly couldn't make it today. Because he's a mama's boy. And he doesn't <laughs> <what> mama says. <laughs> not really. His mom was just yelling at him and he didn't want to hear her. But we're not going to go on that topic. <laughs> the game is Tom Clancy's The Division 2. I know Dakota knows nothing about this. No. I'm pretty sure you, Pete, you played the first one. I played the crap out of the first one. I'm not going to say I'm, like, the best, but I'm not... The Bad. worst, yeah. Like I, I don't. I think I take the worst because I, I haven't played it forever. Talk about games that I don't know because I feel less of like a gamer. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, through I the whole that. entire Saints Row thing, I was just like, I don't. I never really played Saints Row. I never beat. Like, I know there's games that Dakota's going to talk about that I probably won't have any input on, but I'm still going to say I might play that because it sounds, from what he's giving me, it sounds good. Yeah. The Vision Two. I don't know much about it. I know it's another. The division, obviously, it's another group of people after uh, a disease happens or something like the yeah. first one. I'm just like it. Ju- the, di- the first division, the they created a disease. What only affected New York? I just want to know how what happened to the rest of the world. Like they're in Washington right now. What happened to Washington? We will know when we like, get the game and play it. Yeah. <laughs> but. The Division 2 is set to come out March 19th. March 19th, no. March 2019. And obviously the brand is Ubisoft. 
as much crap as Ubisoft gets for making games, they do make some good games. Yeah. They make some bad ones. Yeah. Their servers aren't the best, but their games are... You said Ubisoft? Ubisoft, yeah. Yeah. You're talking about bad games with Ubisoft. Beowulf. (laughs) (laughs) I never played Beowulf, so I can't put any information on it. I got it for Ed Spots 360. And normally, like, I love games. Like, I always give games a chance. Every time I play on Mario, what the review is, I always give them a chance. Beowulf is a game that I started playing. I did half. I, I didn't even get halfway into it. Like, it goes along with the movie Beowulf, and you're basically on your way. Like I'm at the point where you're on your way to the lair of of Grendel, where his mom's at. Okay. I'm on my way there, and your my weapon keeps breaking. That's one thing. Like you had to keep on picking up weapons. As, like, you had to find them on the ground, you had to pick them up. If not, you have to use your bare hands. And that's tolerable. But then enemies keep coming out of nowhere. Like, it's, fi- it's constant fighting. It's from what I remember. It's been a while, but I just remember absolutely hating it. <laughs> because I could, ne- like, I did get past it. It just got so boring. And yeah. got so, like, is like... I'm constantly trying to do this. I'm, like, looking around, trying to find stuff, trying to constantly find a weapon. But it keeps breaking after every few swings. And it just... I'm done. I'm done. I'm <laughs> done. But, yeah, so... It's online, obviously. Multiplayer. And developers are massive and en- massive entertainments to developers. Ubisoft's the publisher. So, it's... Ubisoft, I'll come back to the topic of Ubisoft real quick. They make some good games. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure the Fallout games, no. No, they didn't make Fallout Fallout's games. not, that's Bethesda. Never mind. Having a bad thought right here. <laughs> Ubisoft, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. The Rainbow Six Siege community is up and down. I play too much of that game. Me and Pete play way too much of that game. I've never played, but I've heard TJ talk about it multiple times on multiple occasions, and it, it sounds like fun. I've seen gameplay of it. Like, okay. The only way it will be fun is if is you have a squad of five. If you're good at the game. That's <laughs> that the too. only way you, you will have fun in any game. If you're good at it. If you're bad at it, you're going to hate it, and you're going to be like, this game sucks. Like, everyone has a bad game, and it's like, oh, this game sucks. I'm not going to play it. You're going to play it. Play a few matches, see if you like it or not. Just from what I've seen of Rambo Six Siege, it reminds me a lot of Counter-Strike. Yeah. I have played a lot of Counter-Strike. I can see the same. Yeah. Because similarities. Team play and everything. I'm not good at it whatsoever. I am absolute crap at Counter-Strike. Well, with at least with Tom Clancy's Rambo Six Siege, you can aim down iron sights. But here's the thing with Counter Strike. If you're in a group of people, you I don't and like you're chatting with them, like I'm to your Discord or whatever. Invite them, you start talking to them. You then have a group of people you can then talk to and have a lot of fun with because counter counter strike community is a lot of weird people. And me myself being a weird person, I love meeting other weird people. And and it's just like you have a lot of fun when you meet the right people. So in terms of Rambo's Dead Siege, as long as you can find a way to talk to the other other teammates, I'm assuming that's something you can do. Yeah. yeah. Party right, so chat, you, Discord chat, yeah, so you find, Skype, team call, whatever. Yeah, so you invite the people you're playing with into a party, that way you can talk to each other, and then you talk to each other. I'm pretty sure like, you can have way more fun like that. Because yeah. that's what those kind of games are supposed to be for. Like, you have an objective, but at the same time, you're playing with other people. You're supposed to get to know them, you're supposed to interact. This is why the made games online, so you interact with one another. Yeah. Make friends. It's one thing I love about video games. You don't have to leave your house to make friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> like, But one thing I wanted to add real quick, everything we talk about on this show, <laughs> now and in the future, it's just our thoughts and opinions on the games. Yeah. We're not trying to offend anybody. We're not trying to make anybody mad. We're not trying to start console wars or anything. Because there's one session I want to do of this where we talk about the consoles. They're ups, they're downs, 
the good, the bads. That's, that's with any type of like gaming thing. Like that's what I want to do. I want to talk about all of them from like that's released now. So the Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation Four, PC. Yeah. But that's another topic for another day. But back to Tom Clancy, the Ubisoft games that are good. Tom Clancy Wildlands. It's that game's fun, but if you're playing by yourself and you already beat the game, you it gets boring. You yes. need people to play with on that game that have I still, fun. I still need to play that game. It's fun. I've had multiple times to buy it, but I just got like too lazy or just like uh, I'm gonna save my money. Okay, and then any of the Rayman games, obviously they're Ubisoft, older Ubisoft, but they're Ubisoft. And then I think so. Based on, for this is mainly for Pete because he played the first Division game. Based on the first Division game, how do you think Division Two is gonna play out? Oh, I thought you're. How do you like? How do you think it's gonna happen? What do you think is gonna happen? How do you think you're gonna like it? I think I I seen videos of them like the developers actually talking. It's like oh, where the main thing was like being realistic and everything. It's like oh yeah, you say that. Like, it's going to be a fun game. They're going to improve on a lot of stuff. Like, the PvP in that game is probably going to be more balanced than the first one. Because the first one, if you go in the Dark Zone, and if you're, like, max level, but you don't really do a lot of stuff in the Dark Zone, so your Dark Zone level is low, you will be fighting people who sweat Yeah. bad. Like, really bad. And sweating is actually, like, playing on a game for 24 hours nonstop. <laughs> and you can... It's kind of cool, like... Finding someone when you're extracting where you two are worried about, are you going to shoot me? Or are you going to steal my loot? But at the same time, you're protecting each other from AI and other people. Yeah. So it's like a contrast. They're probably going to do that for Division 2 because I, I have high hopes for Division 2. It's going to, they're, they're going to improve on a lot of stuff, probably more balancing for yeah. weapons, stuff like that, and team balancing. So it's not like, a whole squad of level 99 Dark Zone, and you're like level 32 Dark Zone with another friend, and they just w- come out of nowhere. It's like, hey, look, there's people. Yeah, they're going to try to balance it to where if you're 32, you'd be playing with around 32 players. Yeah, and it's like, hey, we're we're friends. Two seconds later, you get your loot on the helicopter. They kill you and take your loot, and you're just like, well, that's awesome, dude. That's great. Okay. So that was all the games that I have written down that I wanted to talk about today. There are a few more games that I have on mine. Fallout 76. Mean Pete and That is a great game. Sierra over here that's off camera. There, there's her hand. We've played we've been playing it the last what week? That game's great. And anytime, anytime I'm on YouTube and they like, oh Fallout 76 was real bad, graphic game or I'm like, I don't care. It they put in it's multiplayer finally. They've been people have been asking for multiplayer through all the games. The only reason I never played any of the Fallout games is didn't have multiplayer, and I didn't really want to put that much time in a game because I would rather play multiplayer on that kind of yeah. big open world. Fallout, like, I I I've only played one Fallout game. That was four. So, you I've, would like seventy six. Uh, it's but here's the thing. fun. When I was before they even came out with Fallout six, I was playing. I was playing four. I had a few of the. Uh, the creator, uh, some of the creator stuff. I like go in creator, the uh, creator place. Yeah. And there's like all those other those things that basically count as like DLCs for the game. I had a few of those. Like I had one. Like I had one. I had the millets. I had the bad patch one, and I had the I had a sniper rifle one. And the way I have my character looking. And by the way, I've never played Fallout 4, honestly, in my entire life because I tried it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> that was just too much managing. Too well, tedious, but yeah, just going from one side of the map and, like, the other. And it's like, I gotta walk there. Then you get halfway and you die. And you uh, all it it got a little too tedious, like, just going on. I've tried multiple times just to do it on my own, like, no mods or nothing. But <laughs> Just saying, we were trying to avoid the bells in this podcast thing, and one just went off. I don't know if they heard it or not. Yeah, it's just once. But 76, if you liked Fallout 4, even just a little bit, you'd love 76. I, mean, I, like, I like Fallout 4. Like, the story of it is absolutely You would amazing. love 76. 
because it is beautiful for one. It is a beautifully made game. The graphics are wonderful. I, I haven't seen any gameplay of it or anything. Like I only have what you tell me, but I know you well enough to actually address your opinion. Yeah. But like my main thing with it was like with Fallout Four was that like uh, when it came to uh, like having your own set like the settlements. Yeah, I didn't mess around with the settlements that much. Like, settlements there settlements kinda... and then there was also how you leveled up, like with the law picking, hacking, like. Yeah. I'd rather it be I. I'm playing it. I'm just like, Skyrim's better. Good God, I love Skyrim more. <laughs> well, it's more just based on your style of gameplay. That is like true. you love running in and hitting people with a sword. Well, usually, like when I heard like you, Pete, like when I heard like you should use guns, I was like. <laughs> Oh, cool! So I can actually be, I can like be a sniper and everything. Be, it's just, I love sniping. I do. I love, I love shooting from a distance. But That's you have to build your character was, right. That's but, what it is. Well, the thing was, was, like, it was upgrading my guns. Like I had to find a whole bunch of parts for it, and I could barely find them. It was like it got too tedious. Was yeah. my was my issue. Like I don't like it when games get too tedious. Yeah. Like uh, Mel Mel Gear Solid uh. That was one of your soldiers, the Phantom Pain. There, it gets really tedious with uh, managing your base and your army. And the bef- I didn't play four. I played two and three. That's what I. Those are the only Metal Gear Solid games I played before Fa- Phantom Pain. I haven't played Metal Gear Solid. It's amazing. It, I love the games. I love the stories of the games. Like two and three, I absolutely loved. Phantom Pain. I start playing it, and then I seen like you had to manage your own army. I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to do this. Trying to figure it all out, I'm just like this too. So tedious. like an RTS. So I mean, there's still like a there's Correct. still like actual gameplay with it, like where you go in as the main character to places, and you actually do missions. You run around, like. But it's ba- still the central hub is basically what you manage your army. Oh, okay. But like, and it, like you go into a menu and you manage your army through there. But like, if you don't have your army managed a certain way, you can actually affect the game and get the best way. You have to. You have to basically manage your army this way, and just it gets too yeah. tedious. But like I gotta say, me, Pete, and Sierra have been playing seventy six for the last couple of days. The game's great. It is based in West Virginia, so I do know some of the towns. M- most of us been to the towns. If you live in the East Liverpool, Ohio area, closer to Pennsylvania than West Virginia, don't if you live in that area, you know West Virginia pretty well. And if you don't live here. Don't come here. It's not <laughs> a very good place. <laughs> 76 put it a lot better than what it really is. Yeah, not although, um... Well, 76 was taken in 2076. Yeah, yeah, true. So. 2076 well, is what she said. The thing you showed me about uh, Fallout 76 was that tea kettle thing. The giant teacup, yeah. yeah that's yeah. there. <laughs> um, where we're at, literally right across... We're in Ohio. We're right on the river, right across the river... It's West Virginia and the giant teacup. Yeah. They moved it. They didn't do up as far north, close to the Pennsylvania and Ohio. Yeah, like, and the Ohio like, River. They put that tea kettle in it. It's just. They amazing. did further south. Well, they got to do the major yeah, points. That's the major landmark of yeah. I know, but like, that was. <laughs> it's just like, that's really cool. There are people that are telling it, like, in the area, but it's never been to, West, to Chester, West Virginia to see the giant teacup, who are telling my sister. Like, have you seen the teacup? Have you seen the teacup? Because she's going to Kent, Maine. So she's more further no- north of us. And they've never been down to to West Virginia, Chester, to see the teacup. We drive by it every day. Yeah. yeah. When it's we're going to like, Chester for something, we drive by it. Like we see it so much. It's just like, we're used to it. It's just like people that live in New York. Someone asks us about it, we're just like, yeah, it's a teacup, so what? Yeah. And we see it in the, I see it. I see that it's in a game. I was like, oh my god, the teacup's in a game. <laughs> Me, Sierra, and Pete actually defended it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You actually get tea from it. And you get a little tea house, and it's adorable. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but see, us seeing the teacup, it's like people seeing, that live in New York, is like seeing the Statue of Liberty. They see it every day. Some look out their windows, and it's there. They're like, ah, same old deal. I just felt like someone that like, lives in New York, and was like, is playing like a game that where it's based in New York. Yeah. That's what I kind of that's what I kind of thought. Like, it's like that kind of feeling. It just like. But then we, if we, uh, the four of us, or five, six of us, five of us, I can't count. Yeah, five of us. The five of us went to New York right now and seen the Statue of Liberty. We'd be losing our heads. Well, I don't want to 
Avengers is like, I've yeah. never seen this. But you'd be, before. that's what I'm saying, you'd never seen I, it. I, I, would, I would be in awe, I like, oh, wow, that's. I saw it. You'd be like, oh, wow, that is cool. I'm glad to see people in per- person. People in Kent State, Maine, in higher north, never seen the teacup. That's what that's what they're feeling. Like, oh, I've never been there. How How is it? Is it cool? Is it awesome? Is it lame? It's like, it's my sister's like, it's cool, but I drive by it every day. <laughs> yeah, people in China. Like, like Sierra just like, said, people like in China that. see the wall of China. Like, oh, that's cool. Stuff but, like that, like human engineering and all, all that, like Statue of Liberty of the wall. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But I think of like, how is it made? Like, that's cool. How, how did yeah. we do that? That's cool. Especially in that time for the Statue of Liberty, no cranes, except for just. And we we didn't make it. What in A different country made it for us. Yeah. And shipped it over. It. Yeah. Because we were letting them, their ethnic groups into our country at the time. Sorry to get all his, historical on you guys, but it's part of gaming. It's education. We're in a school. We have the right to teach education. <laughs> but even history is part of, a lot of history is part of gaming. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, Assassin's Creed games, like, that is nothing but history right there. That is an, <laughs> the best example I can think of, the Assassin's Creed games. Oh, by the way, we're, we're going to have to wrap this up soon. Oh, I know. All the college time. games, not the... Like okay, three. so best games. All right, best your favorite games, games that I've played. My favorites have to be the Assassin's Creed games, along with some Nautica, which is absolutely beautiful, and Shadow, Shadow of the Colossus and the Last Guardian. Those are like my top favorites I can name right now. And Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Can't forget Kingdom Hearts is a good game. Yes. Pete, favorite games. I'm going with the games I grew up on. I didn't grow up on that game. Shut up, Sarah. <laughs> Halo. 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 I'm not saying like all Call of Duty games because I'm done playing Call of Duty games. I'm but like Black Ops One, World War, 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 War at War. The older Call of Duty. The older. Not Call even of Black Ops. No, none of the Black Ops. Modern Warfare. Oh, Modern. I forgot all, about all World the Warfare. Modern Warfare. I love that game. And then Black Ops. First Black Ops game, I was like, oh, this is good. And two, it's like, yeah, it's still pretty cool. Three, just gone yeah. downhill. I'm not buying anymore. Okay. My favorite games. The good old gave me on some of them. Skyrim. Yes. <laughs> you ask me what's my favorite game, it's instantly going to be Skyrim. I will. You and Ariel, if you guys want to, if we can put you guys on here. Yes, you do. Now? Yes, you do. Right now, Skyrim is slowly getting beaten by Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man <laughs> game, because it is so good. I beat it in three days. That's like a record time beating a game is in three days. Really? I usually beat games in like a day and a half. Same. Well, I also I have... I don't have a life. <laughs> I'm just That's also, all I do all I do day. sometimes hang out with friends. I don't have friends. But... You hang out. You actually go out and hang out with friends. I know. You're okay. Not a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> so Skyrim, Spider Man, Wildlands, and then uh, obviously the Mario games. All right. And Legend of Zelda because I am playing Windbreaker too. I still need to play Legend of Zelda games. I, I hate okay. myself never played for not playing the Legend any of Zelda Legend of Zelda, games. Zelda games. I hate myself for that. They're okay. Sierra. Do you want to say your favorite games? Oh, your voice is going to be on the okay. internet now. Your mic's up now. Oh, um, prob- uh, games that you guys haven't said. I'm more of one of the nerdy gamers, but that's just because I'm a nerd. Uh, Final mean? Fantasy fourteen. What do you mean? One of my um, all-time favorite games. I'm a nerd. No. What do you mean? And what do Kingdom, you mean? And Kingdom Hearts. I love Kingdom Hearts. So much. Does Ariana want to say her favorite games? Yeah. 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 Yes. No, she doesn't. Yeah. Okay. What? Spyro. 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 Fallout seventy six made my list actually. I was gonna yeah, I was gonna say it, but I'm like it just it just came on the list obviously because it's such a new game, but it yeah. Like, it takes a lot for me to be like like the habit of favorite game. I could play a game a lot, but it couldn't be my favorite. It it has to have a nostalgia to it, like ha- Halo. Halos. I played every single Halo possible, and I grew. <laughs> Up on Halo. For me, I love to get my top, my favorites. One has to be really addictive. Skyrim. I haven't been playing it recently because I've been playing other games. 
but Skyrim's is a game I will always go back to to play. Yeah, th- those the three I named are just home for me. But like games like Call of Duty Two, Black Ops Two, it, that'll always be like. Oh okay, so yeah, that'll be home for me because it like it was a game that me, Ariana, and two of our other friends played constantly all day, every day, and games like Skyrim, that'll always be home for me. So they have I'll to be Skyrim. addictive. They have to have decent controls. If the controls are too bad, it doesn't get that high. Good graphics. Like, and I mean good graphics, I mean, like, you have to have it set to where it's a beautiful scenery. Like, like me, Sierra, and y- before y- you got on playing with us, we went to the Top of the World, which is a radio station in West Virginia. And we looked out, and it was, like, sun setting, and it was, you could see the bright colors of the leaves, and it looked so beautiful. Such a beautiful fall scene. It was actually more, it was actually prettier than a lot of scenes I've seen outside of the game in real life. So, it has to be beautiful in that sense. It could be blocky. It just has to have a good, like, environmental beauty to it. Well, it does depend on the game's age. Like, if it's a few years old, it's not going to look as good as, like, a new game. That's what I'm saying. It still looks good. It has to have the environmental beauty to it. Look at Skyrim. Skyrim's not that old, but it's, like, what? It came out in 2011. Yeah, I was like, what? It's, like, almost... 10 years old yeah. and it's still yeah. it's a really pretty game and there's even um the very first playstation 2 version of shadow of the colossus even going back to that game it still looks amazing like there are still some amazing sceneries in it that's what i'm saying like it could be blocky it can be moody but if it sets the scene right it's, it will be beautiful yeah that's I'm gonna end up wrapping it up here. Let me turn down everybody else's mic so that they can talk freely. And you'll just be listening to me. This is a new segment I would like to do with Dakota and Pelly every day, or not every day, but every Thursday. I'd like to do this for you guys. You don't have to listen. You can listen. It's more for gamers and talking about upcoming topics, upcoming games, and stuff like that. But. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching if you're watching your stream. And I'll see you guys later.